Okay, I'm going to finish up the lectures on chapter 13. Section 13.3 has basically everything that I want to do to finish this up. We're going to skip a lot of it. For instance, we're not going to do percentiles, but I'm going to start by looking at Z scores. I did a little bit of that during the office time on Wednesday. So the formula for finding a Z, which gives us, and this is important, the number of st standard deviations that a data value falls from the mean. <clears throat> I'm gonna focus on samples because I have a sample distribution here. So we take like a data point, that's our X. So the X is from the data. And then the mean and standard deviation, those are calculated from the sample. So what I've done is I created a fake distribution of algebra exam scores. So there's 24 of them, that's our sample size. The mean is 66.6, .6, so that lies, you know, somewhere in the middle of the bulk of the data. Standard deviation 16.7 tells me the data is kind of spread out from the mean. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review, let's find the median. Notice I have a nice ordered stem plot. I have 24 values. So I know that my median is gonna cut it to where there's 12 above 12 below. So when I get to the 12th data value between the 12th and the 13th is where I'll find my median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's the 12th. Here's the 13th. So my median is between 67 and 70. That is 68.5. So that's my median. It's also a measure of central tendency. Notice it's a little bit higher than the mean because this 22 is a possible outlier. It's affecting the mean because it's bringing the mean down because you're not adding that much to the total. Whereas the median, remember, it doesn't matter about outliers. It's just sitting in here cutting our data in half. So I wanna calculate some z-scores and then talk about what it means with the data. So I've decided to do four data points. I decided to calculate a z-score for um, 22. Oops. So my z is I take the 22, subtract my mean 66.6, .6, divide by the standard deviation, which is 16.7. I get a Z value. Notice it's gonna be negative, of negative 2.67. <clears throat> so that tells me on my normal distribution with my mean here in the middle, 22 is way down here, and a z-score of negative 2.67 means it's more than two standard deviations away. It's 2.67 standard deviations below. And so unusual values, would be when Z is less than negative 2.0 or Z is greater than positive 2.0. So we would say 22, definitely unusual. It's an outlier. So that's just using the Z score to quickly see if something is an outlier. So I'm gonna do a couple more. Let me erase this. I'll keep, so 
So 22 is an outlier. Let's do 85. So 85, subtract the mean, 66.6 .6 divided by our standard deviation. That's going to be z-score for 85. I get 1.1. We always take our z-scores out to two decimal places. So 85 is a lot closer to the mean because it's only 1.1 standard deviations above the mean. It's not unusual. It's well within the range. It's not greater than two standard deviations away. So let's look at 99. That's like our other like maybe possible outlier thing. So 99, 16.7. I get a z-score of 1.94. Okay, so 99 is out here. Notice it's not as far away from the mean as 22 because it's not quite over two. So if we strictly look at it greater than 2.0, we would say not an outlier, not unusual. Although I think if you made an argument that it seems unusual, you could probably make a strong argument that way. But since it's not greater than two, we'll go with it's not unusual. So that's what the z-score tells us. Very quickly, we can tell something is unusual or statistically significant. We can tell exactly how many standard deviations away from the mean a data point lies. So that's the utility of a z-score. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna look at is quartiles. The reason I'm doing this is we're gonna to get to a box and whisker plot. And so we're going to break our data into four quartiles, hence, the word quartile. So basically what we're doing is, say we have a distribution of data. Well, right in the middle is quartile two. Another name for that is the median because it splits the data in half. Right here, which splits this bottom, say 50%, that's quartile one, and up here is quartile three. So, what we've got is you can think of this as kind of like at 25% of the data, half the data, and 75% of the data. So we're going to find the quartiles. And the nice thing is we already found one of them because we found our median. And then we're going to use the same procedure to find quartile one and quartile three. Uh, you can read that. Same thing here. I'm going here. I got to erase some stuff. Erase, erase, come on. Okay, so we found our median. So our median, I believe, was 68.5. Okay, that's our Q2, that was quartile two. Now I'm gonna find quartile one. So here's what I'm gonna do, let's go to red. My median was right in here. So there were 12 below, 12 above. So for quartile two, I'm gonna look at the 12 values below the median. So I'm thinking this, I have 12 values below the median. Here's my median. I'm gonna split these in half. So if I split 12 in half, I'm gonna have six here and six there. So this is midway between the sixth and seventh data point. Basically what I'm doing is I'm finding the median of the stuff that's below the median. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, 
So my quartile two is midway between 53 and 58. So let's see, 53 plus 58 divided by two, my quartile two is, let's see, 55.5. Whoa, what was that? Sorry. Back to this. Now the nice thing about finding quartile two is I've done all the work to find quartile three. I'll erase some stuff and show you that. Move this. Gonna move this and record this. And did I just say a whole bunch of quartile twos? Probably. I meant quartile one. That's bad on me. So we got our median. which is quartile two, quartile one was 50, fifty-five point five. Sorry, I forgot what it was. Sorry about the misspeak. Okay, now quartile three, that's in the middle of the stuff above the median. <clears throat> so now the median, is here and I have 12 points above here. So quartile three is here. There's six below and six above. So I just count six above, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got 77. Quartile three is right in between 77 and 78. So it's 77.5. Those are my quartiles for my data. So it's just finding the median, the technique, three times. Now I gotta write these down somewhere so I don't forget. Because now I'm gonna go to box and whisker plot, which is the last thing we're gonna do. What it does is it gives us something to look at, the visual summary, I like that, to see where the data is dis distributed. So there's this thing called a five number summary. We have found three of them and the other two are real easy. You look for the min and the max, well, min and max, I did that backwards. And then we have our quartiles. And notice this is our median. This box part, that's where 50% of the data lies around the median. And then 25% in this whisker and 25% there. So all we need is a five number summary from our data. And we can build one of these. So. Our five number summary was the min was 22, quartile one, 55.5. I need another five in there, huh? Quartile two, the median, 68.5. Quartile three, 77.5. I'm tired of red. Okay, so when you build one of these, first you give a good scale. Oh, hey, there's one more, huh? Max, 99. Good scale for this is zero to 100. That puts 50 here, 75, 25. Well, 25 was kind of in there. Let's see what happens if I do this. Oh, we can make a better 25. Put it in the middle more. Okay, now I'm gonna put my box and whisker plot above it. My min, 22, label it. Quartile one, 55.5. 
that's in here, label it. Now I go up to quartile three, which is 77.5 here, and I draw my box. My max is 99, put a whisker there, whisker here, finish it off by putting the median in here, 68.5. So I've got a quick box and whisker plot that kind of shows the distribution of my data. That's not a 73. That should, that was a 75, ugly. Okay, now why do we do this? Just suppose, I had another sample, maybe scores from another class, and maybe their box and whisker plot looked like this. You know, whatever the scores were. I could quickly compare and say, wow, they were more condensed because I can see that all you know, between the quartile one and quartile three, it's all condensed in there. I didn't have a highest score or as lowest score, but in general, it looks like the scores were all lower. You can see this 50% is much lower than that. You can just look at them, easily compare, and then start to do some stuff. So we can make comparisons very quickly. And that's the end of that.